and Dream Big. Sally Ride, Buzz Aldrin, Valentina Tereshkova, and many more space explorers paved the way for people just like you. You are the next generation who will lead the world into the next chapter. We have 38 teams competing here today. And I know for some of you, this is your first event and you're really excited to get started. But I wanna give a special welcome to our rookie team, Team 7461. Now, before we get into matches, let's hear from first founder, Dean Kamen, distinguished advisor, Woody Flowers, and first president, Don Bosi. Welcome to Destination Deep Space, presented by the Boeing Company. It's almost time to blast off. Working with your partners in deep space, you're gonna make this another graciously professional event. First works. Due to all of your mentors, teachers, parents, sponsors, suppliers, and our terrific event volunteers, including many FIRST alumni. They've led the way with their dedication, leadership, and talents. So be sure to thank them all for helping you on this fantastic journey. You continue to impress with your creative design, your teamwork, and your resolve to help FIRST make this a better world. So a big thanks from FIRST to you. You really are out of this world. Continue to think big while having the hardest fun you'll ever have. And good luck to all. It's time for Destination Deep, Deep Space. And get ready for another round of applause for our season sponsor, The Boeing Company. Boeing is at the leading edge of space exploration and are doing it with teamwork and, and dedication, much like you are all doing at first. Check out this cool video. Space is a compelling place. You know, I think about what it's gonna take to go to Mars someday. It is going to take a team, right? Led by NASA's exploration, cadre of astronauts and the vehicle that will take them there. And then I look at the Boeing team, the Boeing team that has pulled this together. But I look at this team and, and they are second to none. I work at Boeing at the Florida Space Coast site, supporting the CST-100 program. I'm a stress analysis engineer, so I ensure that the spacecraft has sufficient structural integrity to take it through its missions. I am a design engineer, so I help design any of the production or ground support hardware that um, helps lift, move, or integrate any of the rocket parts together for SLS. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm in the design visualization group here. Um, we do high-level uh, modeling and simulations. I'm building a rocket that's going to go back into space. That's pretty cool. <laughs> there is nothing more important than teamwork in what we do here. It takes the best minds and it takes really good solid communication. Probably my favorite part of engineering is the creating. The ability to be working on a project and see it go from just a bunch of drawings on paper or a bunch of models in a computer to, as you can see behind me, an entire spacecraft. So we're just building the foundation for the generations after us to build better rockets, to get to different planets. Maybe they'll make it to Jupiter or any of the other planets. You can never learn too much. No matter what you're learning, it's always applicable somewhere. Working on a, one of the first commercial crew programs since the retirement of the shuttle is, is a complete honor and privilege. This is something that we all take a great deal of pride in. Being part of the team going to Mars, I mean, I get goosebumps every time I think about it. I've always had a passion for um, pushing new frontiers in space exploration. Being a part of SLS and of America's space program is a dream come true for me. If you are a Boeing mentor, please come down to the field during our lunch break so we can take a picture of you all together. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, who is from the Boeing company. She is a production engineer for the 777X-9 plane and also a FIRST alumni. Give it up for Jacqueline Bayrudi.
Good morning, everyone. I am ecstatic to be here. When Aaron asked me to come, I jumped at the chance. I am an alumni from Team 2926, and like you, I spent most of my weekends tirelessly trying to build and rebuild this robot. First is very important to me because it is the reason why I begrudgingly became an engineer. See, when I was in seventh grade, my dad was the head mentor and kickstarted our team, 2926. So as if five days wasn't enough, I had to spend weekends now at the high school. So I had two options. I could either help build the robot or sulk in a corner and watch cartoons. Obviously, I chose the cartoons. See, I never wanted to be an engineer. I actually wanted to be a chef. I already chose what I wanted to do, what institute I wanted to go to, to learn. So first, really opened my eyes to what I could achieve as an engineer. So little by little, weekend by weekend, I spent more time on the drawing board and less watching the TV. For six years, I spent countless hours building multiple robots to be at these competitions here. There's a lot of tears, a lot of joy, and a lot of memories. First instills many values that we learn here that helps us countlessly in our life to come. With the engineering background I sustained at first, I wanted to be an engineer. And so I applied for Washington State University. Just to tell you how connected FIRST is, my first time there, nervous as I can, we went to the tour. So we were sitting waiting for somebody to come in and talk to us about why we should be here at Washington State. And then we hear a little murmur of FIRST Robotics. And you can see all these heads pop up saying, first, first, I did first. What team were you on? I'm on this team. And so we created a huge friendship group because of first. Now, everything that I learned here at first, I used in college, and I'm using now as in my job. With the blood, sweat, and tears that I, in, that I put into my work in college, I graduated in December with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a minor in communication. I was lucky enough to install or to get an internship with Boeing, not in engineering, if you could believe it. But I used all of that to figure out what I wanted to do as an engineer with Boeing. As I graduated in December, I already had a job with Boeing as a production engineer with the final body join of the 777X-9. First is so important to me because it really helps students see what they're capable of and really give them a platform to use to go forth and learn so much. I am so thankful for FIRST and I am looking forward to all the awesome competitions that we're gonna have here today. So congratulations everyone and let's have some good competitions. In 2016, Skunk Works Robotics teamed with FIRST Washington to initiate the FIRST Day to raise STEM awareness among Washington State legislators. We would like to invite you to FIRST Day 2019 on March 15th at the Washington State Capitol Legislative Building in Olympia. This year, we are excited to announce that we will have FRC students working alongside legislators to program a small EV3 robot into a friendly competition. We hope to have you alongside of us on FIRST Day. Please welcome from Team 1983 Skunk Works Robotics, Nick Tran. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing today? Awesome. Awesome. So, I'm Nick Tran. I'm from Skunk Works Robotics, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about First Day. Skunk Works and, 19, and uh, First Washington have been working very closely together to help make this year's first day come true. I have a couple of questions for those of you in the audience. First, how many of you know what legislative district you currently reside in? Raise your hands. Okay, okay, that's a decent amount. How about the legislators of your district? And there should be three of them. Okay, I see a lot less hands. Make sure you guys know those. And finally, 
How many of you know what first day is? Awesome. I see a lot of hands. Okay, great. I'm going to explain a little bit about first day. So first day 2019 is going to be on March 15th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the state capitol. What we're going to be doing is a little bit different than all the previous first days. What we're going to be doing is you guys, FRC students, will be mentoring legislators as they build and program their very own EV3 robot. How cool does that sound? Okay, great. I'm glad to hear all of that support because we have a little favor to ask you. If you remember us at Mount Vernon, we had banners. But you guys were so good at signing those banners that those are all filled up. So now we have another request. We would like every member of every team here to write a letter to their legislators, requesting that their legislators come to first day so that you guys can truly give those legislators the experience of first, to give them something to relate to. We ask that your letters be given to Pitt Admin, and when you do give those letters to Pitt Admin, you will get a raffle ticket. I have a whole roll here, Pitt Admin will give it to you, Make sure you hang on to those raffle tickets because at the end of the day on Sunday, we're going to be giving out prizes if you win a raffle ticket. So our team members are gonna be walking around the pit, handing your team a couple of reams of paper so that you all can write these letters. If you guys have any questions at all about first day or what it is, come talk to us in our pit. Come talk to us wherever you can find a skunk and we'll be happy to give you that information or direct you to someone who can, all right? Can you all do that for me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Good luck to all of you competing today. Thank you so much. Big thanks to Skunk Works and First Washington for putting together such an amazing event. And now, please welcome our next speaker, who is the co-chair of the First Executive Advisory Board and is the founding chairman of First Washington, Mr. Kevin Ross. All right, thank you, Natalie. So, I gotta ask, who likes this gracious professionalism thing? You know, gracious professionalism is what makes first work for you and what makes first work for our community, and most importantly, what makes first work for all of the volunteers who are out here uh, putting this uh, production together for you. Um, I'm, I'm now going to put on my national hat and, and uh, tell you a very quick story about why gracious professionalism really matters. Gracious professionalism is a very ill-defined thing. Woody Flowers did that very intentionally. So there isn't a really good definition of what it is, but you know it when you see it, and you also feel it when you do it. Am I right about that? Okay. Uh, it turns out this weekend, there's a brand new event, uh, or there's a first event happening in Victoria, BC, and they sent the, the trucks all the way across Canada, uh, or across the US and up into Canada, uh, with all of the equipment, and it turned out that uh, the Habs were not on the truck when, the, when it arrived, right? Boo. So we found that out on Thursday and um, first called the Pacific Northwest and said, hey, can you help us out? Um, so what happened is we took our Habs, the, uh, the Habs that are supposed to be here, and John Grimm, there's John, he's our FTA. John Grimm left his house at 2 p.m. on Thursday on an epic adventure that's way too long for you to explain the whole thing, but it involved border crossing guards, people scowling at him, the paperwork wasn't right, but John managed to get the Habs delivered so that BC could do their event yesterday, yesterday and today, and for that, on behalf of the entire FIRST community worldwide, John, thank you very much for your gracious professionalism.
John is one of our FTAs here today, and if you don't know John, John is constantly going above and beyond his role as a volunteer. So be sure to be extra super nice to him today, um, because I'm sure that trip to Canada didn't make him as happy or as well rested as he could be. Now, I want to introduce another group of volunteers. These people are incredibly important to you students. You probably have already seen them, maybe even talked to them already. But they're going to be out in the pits running around with blue shirts on, blue polos. These are our judges. Come on up and stand. They, they are led by judge advisor Brian Thomas, and if you check out our screens, you can uh, find out a little bit more about our judges. Uh, maybe if you're interested in some of the places that they work, you could hit them up and talk to them about their jobs as well. Now, the next group of volunteers we need to recognize are responsible for fair and safe gameplay here on Planet Primus, and that is our referees. And they are led by head referee and first alum, Aaron Schmitz. As many of you know, safety is a huge priority for FIRST Robotics. So we have special people to thank to make sure that we are being safe today. These are our safety advisors, Kenan McPeak and Trent Howell. And congratulations to Team 5348 Charger Robotics from Kokato, Minnesota for their winning safety animation. So let's check it out now. There's always a lot to do before a rocket launch, but safety should always be the number one priority. Always get plenty of sleep. It's important to stay awake and play it safe. Protect your eyes, hands, and feet with the proper attire. Keep your hair tied back and no loose clothes. Always make sure to secure parts before cutting. In case of emergencies, read up on your team's safety procedures and always power down the robot before working on it. With all the proper precautions taken and the work done, we're ready to blast off. Speaking of safety, coaches and mentors, please make your team aware of any safety plan you have in place in case of an emergency this weekend. It's a good idea to note the exit locations in both the gym and the pits and elsewhere throughout the building. Now we have to give a big thanks to Team 5588 Rain Robotics for hosting a quiet room here at this event today. It is located in room 618 and if you have questions about why it's there or want to know more about the quiet room idea, um, you can ask Pitt Admin and you can also probably ask any of the Rain Robotics students. But let's give them a round of applause for organizing this. Like Jacqueline said earlier, you learn tons of skills through FIRST that are incredibly valuable after you finish high school. Companies and educators are looking for students just like you. So let's turn to the screen and hear more about the impact FIRST can have after high school.
first and really prepare you to solve any number of the world's big problems. The skills that you're going to be learning can completely change the future. If you've been involved with FIRST for a while, you probably know that FIRST truly is a family. And students, I am sure any of the FIRST alumni that are here today, either volunteering on the field or in the pits or as coaches and mentors, would probably love and be very willing to talk to you about what life looked like after high school. So as many of you know, there is an incredibly important award that we give here at FIRST. And this award recognizes outstanding students who go above and beyond in their community and on their robotics team. So we are going to roll the names of our Dean's List nominees. And I would really appreciate it if you could all rise, your, the nominees could rise so we can properly recognize you. In addition to competing at this event, the students who are nominated for Dean's List have to be interviewed by judges today. So students, if you're a Dean's List nominee, we all wish you the best of luck on your interviews. And now, uh, coaches and mentors, we want to speak to you about a new program that FIRST has created called Jumpstart. And this is a program that helps prepare new teams for competition. It has programs for FTC and FLL, and since many of you might coach multiple teams, this would be a great resource to, for you to check out to make your teams have the best experience possible. You can check out the FIRST website for more information. Students, it is incredibly important that we give a huge round of applause to our coaches and mentors and parents, because without them, y'all would not be here today. So let's recognize them right now. Coaches and mentors and parents, you make a huge difference for our students. You are enabling them to become the leaders of the next generation, and it is incredibly important, and we are so thankful that you are here with us today. Now, everyone, I would like you to please rise and remove your hats for the national anthem. All right, teams, are you ready to get started here on Planet Primus? Are you excited? Are you ready? That's what I thought. 
Please give a warm welcome to my partner on Planet Primus, your game announcer, Brett Wartsman. What's happening, Auburn Mountain View? Let's and play robots. Yeah, let's go. Drivers, you can come on out and set your robots up, and we will get started in just a moment. Thank you.